Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing, like, subscribe and share. Um, for those who are already subscribed, I just want to thank you for supporting me. And yes, um, I wanted to talk about the carnival. It's coming up, Notting Hill Carnival. That's the one that the majority of people go to, even though there are other carnivals around the UK. So Notting Hill Carnival is one of the largest carnivals. And as such, we have to be very aware of what it can be used for. It's no longer a time where people go and they, you know, listen to all the music and you have fun and you know the floats are going through that is a part of it but by and large people are throwing paint on each other it's lost its momentum but anyway what I'm more concerned about is the surveillance issues you have to remember now that you're not just worrying about police officers with tasers, with pepper sprays, with that kind of stuff, or with batons. You're dealing with artificial intelligence now. So anybody who is going to the carnival needs to be squeaky clean. And you cannot underestimate this. This is the perfect opportunity for Operation Nexus, for Section 60, and for them to use all of their new surveillance equipment. Um, up to about five years ago, uh, they, they, they finished the contract last year. The police were using something called predictive policing. It was costing them £100,000 a year. And they signed up to this organisation in America called Predpol. And what it does, it, it kind of um, predicts behaviours and the police are supposed to be able to determine how to catch criminals based on past behaviour. Well, the Chinese had um, an exhibition in London just last month and it was one of these surveillance exhibitions. And what was in the exhibition, one of the reporters was saying that he saw a big screen of all the people outside the exhibition walking up and down the street. And they had these, these blue lines superimposed. And when he asked what they were, they were motion sensors and they could actually predict every movement that individual would make. And not only predict it, they predict it based on past behaviour and also what they think you're going to do next. And they have something called thermal imaging based on body heat. And so I don't know how much of that is already in force in the UK. The UK is very, very stealth, stealthy. And so we're going to have high resolution cameras on buildings, on police officers jackets. It's it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare only because we st that we still are in a position where they want to reduce net migration. And, you know, when people, they're talking about finding criminals, but why would they want to find criminals? If they're on the street, that usually means that they've done their time and they've been released. But what they are looking at, they're looking at criminals because they fear they may reoffend. So they're looking to pick them up as well. God forbid if you're caught in the flow, what they call collateral um, detainees or collateral criminals, because what sometimes can happen is because the facial recognition is not only 96, it's 96% error, 96% it makes mistakes. And because of that, it could actually pick up, identify wrong people. And in identifying wrong people, those, well, when I say wrong people, the people who, I mean, the facial recognition system is supposed to pick up criminals, um, illegal immigrants, that kind of thing. But what it could do is pick up inadvertently someone else. And if that's someone else, when they do a check on them, that person is guilty of something or is an illegal immigrant or is a past offender, they can actually... Um, 
take that person um, into detention. And that's what they call collateral detainees because they never really intended to get that person, but that person has been caught in the fray. So what's going to happen is, is that they're going to have mass face, facial recognition or spatial um, programming, what they call it, where a wide variety of people are not only going to be surveilled, but, you know, it actually, it does so much now. The surveillance equipment is so sophisticated, you will not believe. You know, young people believe that, OK, if a police can't see what they're doing, they, they you know, nobody knows what they're doing. But under this method of surveillance, the police don't ha even have to see you. It will all be caught on camera. And it's got such a wide range. Everybody be caught who's up to no good. So, like I said, if you're going to the carnival, you need to be squeaky clean. You can't be messing around. You can't be an illegal immigrant because they'll get you. Um, I just wanted to make sure I covered most things. Um, uh, you're dealing with high definition cameras mounted on buildings, police officers and police jackets. Um, you're going to, there's going to be helicopters, miniature planes and drones, um, facial recognition cameras. And, you know, what disturbs me is, like I said, they wrongfully identify 96 percent of the time. Um, last year, they had one stabbing and 49 knives were seized. Um, 385 people were held. Well, it ranges between 385 and 400. 156 of those detained were drug offences. So marijuana and goodness knows what else. And apparently 30 officers were hurt when a fight broke out. So they are looking um, to make sure that there's no knives being carried in and that kind of stuff. Um, the overall levels of violent crime were down despite the number of arrests. So um, I understand that we do want the carnival to be a safe place, but it's no longer a place of enjoyment if you have to feel that every move you make is being watched. For me, I used to go every year. I don't bother going anymore. You know, because I just sing the joys out of it. You know, you know, you don't even get to dance or anything. It's so, it's so, so many people down there. And then, you know, people throwing paint and chocolate on your good, good clothes. And, you know, or people are drunk. And I tell you something, the majority of people are white anyway. So it's kind of lost its Caribbean flavour. There are a few that, you know, I I'm sure it's predominantly white now. So anyway, so all I'm saying is that, you know, for those of you who are going down there, just make sure you're on the right side of the law. Um, there, the police will be wearing body cameras, directional microphones. There's motion technology, computer algorithms. And you know those computer algorithms are biased. They're wrong. Um, all the information will eventually be collated, fed up to a cloud of data and downloaded into the various systems. Uh, so the carnival is a perfect opportunity for Operation Nexus, Section 60, immigration officials and the Met Metropolitan Police to have a field day. Because remember, Operation Nexus is working with the Home Office. We're going to have immigration officers on standby. They're going to have all the equipment there. Um, and, you know, Section 60 gives them um, license to stop and search you for no reason. So they don't have to have a reason anymore. They don't have to do the go wisely and, you know, tell them why they're stopping you, who they are, what law they're stopping you under. They can just stop you for no reason. So that's in place. So you have to bear in mind when you're going to the carnival, you're, you, you know, you're an open target. Um, and you're not relying on the astuteness of police officers anymore. It's the powers of artificial intelligence. That's why I called it the surveillance playground, because it's got nothing to do with people. The people are there as a veneer, as a cover. It's a cover up. So if you see the police with a couple of batons or, you know, whether it's gun. Well, they don't usually have guns. Not really. But, you know, whatever it is they're holding, that is a veneer 
all those shields of veneer. What you really need to be wary of is the biometric um, and artificial intelligence and the facial recognition and all of those surveillance um, systems that they have in place or they will have in place for the carnival. Um, like I said, the Chinese entrepreneurs had an exhibition in London last month, which was July 2019. They displayed surveillance opportunities. It showed passing crowds on a large TV screen with coloured lines superimposed on individuals, which was tracking their movements, predicting follow-up movements and behaviour. And like I said, the police call that kind of um, prediction, predictive policing. They used to have it up in certain areas and where they felt high crime was. But I don't think they could justify the amount of money they were spending. And plus, they had to keep paying for license fees or something to Fred Paul in America. Um, yeah, what else have I got here? Yeah, saying the coloured lines on individuals at the Chinese exhibition detects every single movement of every person in sight of the cameras. Each person is analysed. Their behaviour is predicted based on previous behaviour, then fed into a facial recognition system, which is linked to millions of faces, credit card data, travel records, body temperature, mobile phones, GPS chips, car registration numbers and location. Although I, I don't think um, the UK is at that far advanced stage yet, but this is what the um, Chinese were exhibiting as the potential of what can be done with the surveillance equipment. Um, predictive policing, like facial recognition, is discriminatory. It encourages racial profiling, discrimination. It threatens privacy and freedom of expression. And that according to the Liberty Group. So I'm glad they've ended that contract. Um, predictive policing factors in pre-existing police bias so disproportionately affect certain communities and demographics. I found out that DWP has a surveillance system. I wonder if you knew that. Apparently they work with the police. If the police find some protesters and they report them to the DWP, I'm not quite sure why, I'm not quite sure if the DWP withholds uh, benefits for bad behaviour. I'm not sure. But likewise, conversely, the DWP give information to the police. You know, it's to um, prevent crime, apparently. <sighs> and it helps them to detect crime. Under Section 29 of the Data Protection Act and under the guise of preventing and detecting crime, we are being forced to give up our freedom to express and our freedom of movement. The Investigatory Powers Act, otherwise known as the Snooper Charter, that pre still prevails, which is incompatible with the European Convention of Human Rights. The Snooper Charter allows browsing your history on, the, on when you go online, monitoring the apps you download on your phone, usernames and passwords, and cell site data to track your location. The police can seize data without a warrant, and they're still fighting to get that with WhatsApp. So bear all of this in mind if you plan to go to the carnival, because innocent or guilty, you may not go home to your family if that facial recognition camera, camera misidentifies you. So I just, you know, some people, they go to the carnival and are totally oblivious of what's going on. And they're totally oblivious how vulnerable they are. And a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm not guilty. I haven't done anything wrong. So I've got nothing to worry about. But like I said, you know, there's something called collateral detainees. And whether you've done something wrong or not, you can still be caught up. You can still be in that picture. You can resemble someone who's a criminal. Like I said, that Professor David Baker, um, who got stopped 100 times in seven years, that was a similar situation. He was nothing like the, you know, different age, different address, but stopped a hundred times. And he still has to go through the process of trying to prove that he's innocent and that he's not the person. And in the end, they let him go. He's, mis you know, he's, a mis he's misidentified. So all I'm saying is that whether you are a squeaky clean or not, if that facial camera misidentifies you, remember, it's 96% incorrect. You could be hauled down to the police station. 
That's all I'm saying. You've got to be extremely careful. I mean, with those kind of statistics, I wouldn't even want to go, to be honest. But, you know, people want to go. They want to enjoy themselves. They want to maintain this culture. And the carnival, Nottingham Carnival, is a big part of the Caribbean culture. And even though it's changed its dynamics somewhat, it's still considered, you still find millions of people going. Oh, well, not millions, but, you know, a number of people going to that event and which is um, towards the end of August on August bank holiday. The Sunday is no longer, it's supposed to be for children and, and families, but it's no longer like that. I mean, when I went down there, it might as well have been Monday because it was crammed and the same old raunchiness and this and that, and you still can't walk, you know, the crowds carry you around and you know, I just, I don't like being in a place where I feel uncomfortable. I don't like being, being in a place where there's no way out. And that's how I feel when I go to the carnival now. I feel as though there's no way out. You know, most of the roads are locked off. If there was anything to break out or if a fight broke out, or if anything happened, you're trapped. And that scares me. Even if I go to a night uh, a nightclub, I make sure I'm near the entrance or the exit or near a fire exit. I don't like feeling trapped. And when you go to the carnival these days, it's exactly like that. It's like you're just going into one big bubble and, you know, you're locked into that bubble and you can't get out. You know, you're, you're forced into certain directions. The police force you to go down certain routes and certain roads. And so you have no free will. I don't like that at all. But, you know, young people, they don't care. They go down there. They go down there probably to meet girls or whatever they go down there for. Um, but they'd better be very, very careful this year. I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers increase this year more than last year. And it just won't be people committing crimes. It will be those people who have been caught under the facial recognition camera. Those are the people who are going to be detained. I mean, you know, hopefully there's not so much knives coming in this year. And, you know, there's not so much crime. I think there was one person stabbed, which isn't bad out of all those millions. Although you don't want any to be, you don't want any incidences. But, you know, these things happen. So I just wanted to, I'm only doing this to really put you on the alert. So you don't go to the um, carnival blind. You are aware that you are under the microscope. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.